Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Lakers played the Utah Jazz tonight. Second game of Emirates Cup play for the Lakers and for the Jazz. And uh, that game is going to be at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 Eastern. So we're finally back to normal schedule. And it's going to feel like a late game because we've had so many early games. <laughs> I don't think we've had a game at 7.30 all month. But that is the normal time for home games in L.A. So, tonight, we're going up against a Jazz team that's lost two straight. That is one of the worst teams in basketball. Pretty much a bunch of kids they are trying to run to develop. They are 29th in overall net rating, 29th in defensive rating, 27th in offensive rating. This is definitely one of the worst teams in basketball. <laughs> but as I've been making uh, the case for... They have a whole lot of talent, too. A bunch of young talent, but still guys that they got in the lottery that should expect to be better than they are right now. So if any of them go off for a big game, it could be a big problem. So that is what I want people to understand going into this game, uh, especially since this group play for this Emirates Cup. Uh, every game matters more to these players and these coaches and, of course, we got to keep in mind that scoring matters. So you will expect, regardless of what the score is, we're going to try to run it up and get as many points as possible, especially since we're going against OKC, who um, is he head and shoulders above everybody else because of how their differential in, in point total has been from the teams that they've beaten. So we're going to have to do some work. We're number two right now behind OKC, and scoring absolutely matters. So, yeah. Expect the Lakers to have their brand new floor for this tournament. It's not the black one like last year. They gave us a different floor that's a bit more light, different look a bit more like the regular floor that we normally have at home. Uh, but it's it's kind of dope either way. I think it's one of the nicer ones, and we'll see how it looks in person. Uh, of course, as I said, we'll have our no, I don't think I said we have our purple jerseys, our road uniforms that we're going to wear on that floor, and Utah will be wearing white. So. The Utah Jazz, man, I watched a lot of highlights on them last night. Um, as I've said, they lost their last two straight. One of them was against the Clippers with their new floor, which I thought was pretty cool. And um, they they ultimately just ran to James Harden and a bunch of guys who had a lot of energy. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., Zubats, they just really pushed those guys around. It wasn't very difficult. And they were coming off a of back-to-back, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. But the game before that was against the Sacramento Kings, who also debuted their new court in color way, which I thought was really cool as well. Um, and Darren Fox went off for 49 points. And it, although it was a pretty close game, uh, Sacramento edged about. And before that, I believe they played the Dallas Mavericks, where they actually got the victory there. And they beat the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I can't even tell you what happened there. <laughs> I really don't know. They just kind of uh, pushed past the Mavericks in crunch time. I think they won that game by one. Uh, and, and it was just a lot going on in regards to uh, what's the young fella. I can't think of his name. I never can remember his name. Uh, but from the Dallas Mavericks, the guy they got from New Orleans last year, he had a good game off of the bench. And uh, they were able to edge out Dallas in Dallas, which is one of their impressive wins of the season. Before that, they had uh, Phoenix Suns, where Devin Booker and co. got the victory there. It wasn't too difficult for them. It didn't seem like that was a very close game. And then prior to that, they had a game against the Spurs, if I'm not mistaken. Now, when it comes to that, that Phoenix game, one of the reasons why... That game is kind of blurry in my mind. It's because I was distracted by the floor, which is a theme going on with Utah Jazz. They've been running into alternate floors. And, and of course, with their group cup game, they had a floor which was gray and very difficult on the eyes to watch. Very difficult. So I'm glad this game is not in Utah because that floor is something I do not want to see <laughs> for three hours. I, I really don't. So that game was a little... I was a little distracted trying to watch the, the the highlights of that one. To be honest with you, it was it was it was a pain, literal pain. 
Uh, but nevertheless, uh, F- Phoenix did get the victory there. And as I said before that, they played the San Antonio Spurs, um, where they ultimately, I think they won that game. I'm not really re- recalling how that went. But yeah, that's that's kind of how things have gone for them. So did they win the Spur game? I'm stuck on that thought. I don't remember. And uh, before that, they played the Bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And um, Giannis and Co. I believe got the victory there. So a lot of this is foggy in my mind. I watched those highlights before I went to sleep. Some of them I was only halfway paying attention to. The Jazz were really getting pushed around a lot of those games. <laughs> And they only won two of them. They won the Dallas game, and I believe it was the Spur game. But I'm not really sure of that one. So, yeah, man, this is this is a team. And I think prior to that, I think they lost to was it the Rockets or somebody. I didn't watch the highlight of that, but I, I watched six highlights of Jazz games, and they seem to be playing on alternate floors just about every game. So that was kind of cool, man. Um, but um. Yeah, this is this is no exception. Once again, another alternate floor for the Utah Jazz, seeing the Lakers in group play, and uh, hopefully we can just as a, as a Laker team come in with the momentum of us winning our last five games, beating depleted teams. Just continue to add this one to another one of those um, as a stretch of a really soft part of our schedule. Uh, we've beaten up on some really really hurt teams, man. Philadelphia, New Orleans. Toronto, uh, who else was it? Memphis, and of course San Antonio in group play last Tuesday. Who was the only semi-healthy team that we ran into, and even they were missing one of their most key players in Jeremy Sohan. So tonight, the Utah Jazz might be the healthiest team that we've seen. If I'm being completely honest with you, they might be the healthiest team that we've seen in in, in all of this winning streak. Uh, but they are two missing somebody. Taylor Hendricks went down with a broken leg and a rolled ankle. He needed surgery on both, so he's out for the season. That was devastating for the young fella. I just found that out last night before I went to sleep. And so, yeah, no Taylor Hendricks for them, but I don't believe that he was really in rotation. I think they were starting to bring him along, but I, I don't know that he was playing regularly anyway. So, you know, this is the year where he'll be sitting out recovering from that and rehabbing from that and hopefully everything goes 100 percent for him he's still extremely young but that's a really bad injury really bad injury uh so uh, also they're going to be down walker kessler or the center that the lakers so desperately want to acquire dude is not very healthy right now so we won't get a chance to look at him and that does concern me uh are they hiding him <laughs> you know what i'm saying are they trying to keep us from seeing how he looks right now i don't know why they would but I always say, man, Walker Kessler blocks a couple of shots. It goes down with injury. That's kind of how that goes. So if people want him on their team, they need to temper their expectations for exactly how much he will give you because he's not the most durable center right now. And how much of that has to do with him playing on a bad Utah team, you never can tell. Because teams like this tend to rest people a bit more than they need to to, to secure their tanking efforts. <laughs> and uh, showcase other people like Filipowski, for example, who's been playing very well at the four and five spot, mostly four. But you got to watch out for a stretch four there who's going to uh, do a lot of different things. He's pretty comfortable for all, from all three levels and has really been one of the hotter rookies to start this season. So be aware of him. Um, who else is on this team? John Collins has been scoring like a madman. So we got to respect John Collins out there. <laughs> uh, talented forward. Been around for some years now, but still has a lot left in the tank, especially scoring the ball. So he's a lob threat. He's a corner three threat at all times. And uh, it's going to get offensive rebounds, too, which is something we need to pay attention to from this club. They tend to get good offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, stuff like that. In the games that they've won, that's what's really been glaring. They control the glass and it equals success for the Jazz. So if we keep them off the glass... Based on the numbers, we'll probably secure a win. Uh, so, yeah, they don't shoot a lot of threes. That's one thing I can say about the Utah Jazz. They are one of the teams that has lower um, volume from behind the arc. They tend to hover around 30, 33 shots 
up and usually their other team ends up blowing them out in that way they don't guard the perimeter very well and they don't shoot it very much so if we shoot well we use our shooters uh keep our volume up take quality threes we should outscore this team uh based on what i've looked at there so um you know Keontae george is on a nice stretch right now uh he tends to turn the ball over a lot but over the last couple games he's kept his turnovers down a bit tends to be a uh ineffective not even gonna say ineffective that's not the word uh inefficient shooter tends to shoot a lot of shots miss a lot of shots and um it's coming along, you know, he's, he's a young player they drafted last year and he's really good, but he's really got a lot of stuff to, to work out in his development and taking care of the ball and being efficient is definitely one of those things, but he's, he's, he's aggressive and, um, you're going to have to deal with him. And of course, another guy that comes to mind is Jordan Clarkson, who in the highlights, I can't tell you how many times he took transition threes and made them. He will launch a three out of nowhere. I don't remember him doing that too much with the Lakers, but over the last couple of years with the Jazz, he's a guy who just launches out of transition, man. It's a fast break. All of a sudden, he's stopping at the three-point line, letting it fly. So you got to be aware that that is a very key part of his game. And he's going to do it tonight. He's going to launch three. So if, you don't, if you're on a fast break and he's running with you, don't be so certain he's coming to the rim. He, he, he may very well pull up the tray. Uh, so that's something that I call, saw repeatedly in all six highlights. He, he's just he's launching threes and he's hitting them. Really unorthodox threes, and they fall a good portion of the time. So look out for Jordan Clarkson. He's going up against the Lakers, his old team, and I'm pretty certain he's going to want to do something good against us. They also have another Laker on the back of their bench who doesn't get a lot of minutes, Svi Mikhailu, who was with the Boston Celtics last year as they won their championship. He's also a young player that I'm wary, wary of when he's out there but he's not getting many minutes with this team but if for some reason they do check him in i would imagine he wants his presence felt so just know he's back there patty mills is back there somewhere too not getting any minutes but they're down there uh, who else man uh of course laurie markinen you can't really mention the jazz without laurie markinen he's healthy so that means he's capable of doing all the good things from behind the arc all the good things on the offensive glass pretty good in transition gets to the rim it's a nice all-star in this league that is known for shooting the three. So if we're not ready for Laurie Markkinen, one of the more covetable players in this league, uh, then he could go for 40 on us and, and do it in a very efficient way. So we got to keep him off the glass as a seven-footer with a lot of length, could do some things defensively. He could guard people at the three better than a lot of seven-footers his size. So we need to just understand that if anybody's going to hurt us, it's probably going to be Markkinen. <clears throat> so... You know, with all the talent that they have, uh, he, he's he's probably the best one. He's probably the best player on this team. So, of course, Laurie Markin that we focus on. Uh, also a guy that's on their bench that puts a lot of pressure on the rim. Uh, very, very fast speed demon. And somebody who could take on a much greater load than he's asked to is Isaiah Collier out of USC. Brownie's old teammate. They drafted him late in the first round, even though he's supposed to go as high as the lottery. So he was just somebody that fell in their lap. And believe me, he stands out in the highlights. Even though you got Colin Sexton, Jordan Clarkson, and, and Keontae George in front of him, when they put him on the floor, he's undeniable. He is a fast player who could finish in a, in a multitude of ways. He, he improvises in midair pretty well on layups and stuff like that. So this is somebody who I think has a bright future. And... Uh, you could potentially get cooked if you have your second unit out there. Small, you know, guys like D'Lo, he's going to run past him, man. So you got to be on high alert when Isaiah Collier steps into the game to make sure that there's adequate defense in front of him. Max Christie, uh, somebody like that has to be in front of him. If not, he's going to push him around, dude. He's a big, stocky guard. Not tall, but stocky. And he will push people. He's fast. And he's known for slashing. It's what he does. He, he could slash a million times in a row. And that is something that I think could really hurt the Lakers if they take it lightly. So be aware of young Isaiah Collier. Of course, we mentioned Colin Sexton. Uh, he's out there. He hit the corner three pretty well in the highlights that I saw. Um, not the, the young bull that we remember, but he could still have a renaissance night and go for 30 at any moment. 
So you got to be careful with him. He takes a lot of pride on the defensive end, even though he's not overly effective defensively. He's he's prideful and he will scrap it if he has to. Um, so so beware of him. And uh, you know this Jazz just has a lot of team, man. A lot of team, a lot of talent on the team. So what I'm trying to say. Uh, Cody Williams is back there. They took in the lottery. They don't really use him that much, but he's a very high level player that they're going to develop. And could potentially be an all star in this league before it's over. So keep an eye open for young Cody Williams, who may get some minutes tonight uh, in in, in uh, some of the players' absence. Uh, Johnny Juzang has been playing pretty well, and that's a role player that they have on, the, on their bench. Uh, they use a little bit, so keep an eye open for Johnny Juzang. Hits the three, makes plays for other people, that kind of thing. Not a bad forward out here. And, uh, you know, I just think the Jazz are one of the deeper teams in the NBA, to be honest with you. Even though they don't necessarily win games, they have plenty of talent up and down the roster, man. They got a bunch of guys that can go for 20 points on this roster. So, you know, they're not looking to win. Obviously, this is group play, so you may want to be careful as to see you provide yourself a certain guard against uh, complacency because they may want to win the tournament games. You know what I mean? That kind of thing may be an entirely different way of looking at it. It does count for or against your record if you lose, but this is a tournament, and a lot of times guys take pride in that. So I'm sure we will as well. We're on a five-game losing streak. We've beaten teams. I think the Lakers want to continue that winning streak, not losing winning streak forgive me but we're on a five game winning streak and we want to continue winning and we expect that this is a t- game we're supposed to get and we've been taking care of the ones we're supposed to especially at home where we're six and oh so this should be no exception i do expect the lakers to come out and fight uh we've had adversity at home in most of these games we've won but we find a way to win i wonder what the adversity will be tonight hopefully nothing too serious uh, we do have some players that we expect won't be able to go tonight. Rui is a game time decision, but he's missed the last couple of games, so we will see. Uh, of course, AD still dealing with the eye, but he's expected to go. No Vando, no Wood, we know that. Uh, no Jackson Hayes, we know that. And um, that's pretty much where we're at. I think Bronny's dealing with some type of a heel, so I think that's noteworthy, even though I don't expect he would get any minutes anyway. I think he might be dealing with a heel bruise, is what that said. So we'll keep an eye open for Bronny. He probably picked that up in the G League or something. But, uh, yeah, man, that's really what's going on. Your Los Angeles Lakers are playing a Utah Jazz team that has been playing some close games. You know, they haven't been getting blown all the way out in these losses that they've taken on. But they have lost three of the last five. Actually, three of the last four of the last six or something like that. But, you know, when you consider the fact they went into Dallas and won that game uh, and then they played some close games, Utah, I mean, Sacramento was a game that they played that was really close. Uh, you know, you got to give them respect, man. They're not a pushover basketball team. Um, and and that's really what it comes down to. Their record is not uh, a sign that they don't have the ability to, to compete. It's not. They may not play great team ball because they're trying to make sure they get Cooper Flad. You know, be bad for flag is what I've been saying. Um, you know, and, and and be lazy for Bailey, Ace Bailey. So these are things that these teams are doing out here, and and it makes sense because it's a very talented draft coming up, and you want to get the highest pick you can. And losing is going to give you the best odds at that. So I don't doubt that the Utah Jazz are going to lose a guy a lot of games this season, but I also don't doubt that they have reason to be competitive in this particular matchup. So. That's what I say. Stay on guard. Be aware of the Utah Jazz. Uh, they got a lot of lottery talent, and some of those guys are really going to want to show up in the Laker game. You know what I mean? That's what it really comes down to. They're in L.A., big bright lights, massive stage because of the cup tournament branding of the game. They're going to want to play well, and they're going to want people to remember their name. So let's make sure that they walk out of here with a loss and uh, – you know, I expect our team to really show up. In the last one, uh, they had some trouble against lesser talent. The team that the New Orleans Pelicans put on the floor is worse than the Utah Jazz team you're seeing tonight. Put it like that. With all the players that they had out and the guys they were running out there, this is Utah team is more capable than that one. 
And so that's something we should be aware of. We struggled, got out to a slow start in the last two games, gave up a bunch of offensive rebounds in both of those games. This is a team that if they rebound, they give themselves a better chance to win, as already stated. So we have to do better on the glass. Stop these second chance points and stuff like that. All right, so that's what I want to say about the Lakers, man. We're fifth in overall offensive rating. We have raised our offensive rating on this winning streak. We are very pleased with how our offense has looked since putting, um, you know, Cam Reddish into the starting lineup and moving D'Lo to the bench and then furthermore uh, advancing Dalton Connect's usage as well. We've just been a better offensive team, especially off of the bench. So we're going to continue to utilize those guys, hopefully the same way, and get those type of results. Uh, Dalton Connect has really stepped into his own over the last three games. In the last one, he had a career-high 27 points and, and contributed in other areas as well. And we just want to see that continue. He has to take shots, make shots, and feel good about the shots he's taken. Um, you know what I mean? Don't. Hold back. I want to see more continued defensive prowess and rebounding from Max Christie. Uh, his offense hasn't really come around, but I do recognize him as a defensive first player. So as long as he's doing the defensive things, I'm confident that he's given us what we need from him. Um, Cam Reddish, hopefully he'll be back. He did miss the last two. Uh, Rui Achimura, the same thing. Hopefully we can have Rui back out there to kind of make our roster make more sense. I've heard the argument that Rui should stay on the bench because of the success we're having. I, I really haven't given it much thought at all, uh, but I do like what I've seen from us in Rui's absence. So we just got to you know, utilize everybody we have and continue to work on some of the rotations that we found in Rui's absence. Um, keep some of those guys on the floor together. And I really like what I saw from Christian Coloco in the last one. Rim protecting, he rebounded better, got some lobs. We want to see more of the same from him. So, yeah, man, Anthony Davis, still at the top of the MVP race, if you ask me, top three at least, or at least he should be. And I do expect that he'll go off big time tonight if he's able to go, which I expect he will. Um, Utah Jazz don't really have anybody who can stay in front of him, so this should be a big Anthony Davis scoring night, in my opinion. And Bron James took a night off from the triple-double watch. I do expect for him to uh, aim for that triple-double once again. And, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where he's 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 been turning the ball over a little more with, with uh, more playmaking duties. And I would love to see that kind of reeled in some. I know he does tend to turn the ball over, but uh, some of those turnovers I think were miscues that I think could be communicated around and, and focused on a bit. Uh, so hopefully we get it together. And, of course, Austin Reeves, you know, if he has it going, keep shooting. If he doesn't have it going, morph into a playmaker, man, because we do have other guys that can shoot the ball. Dalton Connect should be given a bit more of a green light uh, in this system going forward. And, uh, you know, we can't have that if guys are going to be jacking them shots and bricking them repeatedly so that goes for anybody let's diversify a bit more and make sure anthony davis gets his green light shots going but all this these austin reeves three for 10 nights four for 16 whatever no nah, i don't i don't think we're better for that man i really don't so I talked a lot about it in the last one we were able to win in spite of it but his aggression needs to be aligned with his efficiency salute the kobe minute so that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully we get some more uh, effort out of Cardi G. He had been contributing a bit more over the last couple of games, so hopefully his impact is felt regardless if the stats show that he did much or not. Um, and that's really where I'm at with it, man. I expect a big Anthony Davis night. That's who I would put uh, as a guy at the top of the list for the Lakers this evening. I just feel like there's no real matchup for him. Um, there, no one. Collins is not a defensive guy. He makes his money scoring the ball and rebounding. Um, Filipowski, young rookie, no way in hell he's guarding Anthony Davis. Uh, Walker's not out there. No chance. Uh, that Markinen 
guards Anthony. So it's like they just there's no matchup for Anthony Davis. This is a big Anthony Davis matchup where he should take mighty advantage of the roster there. And so that's exactly what I expect to see. Stars should show up tonight because they're the guys who are supposed to be guarding them are not really there for the Jazz. So that's pretty much my thought on things, man. Um, if I'm missing some players or I'm not thinking about some people, we'll see them tonight, you know, that kind of thing. But I just want to see the Los Angeles Lakers continue to utilize Dalton Connect. That's what's important to me, getting AD the ball, getting Dalton the ball, and uh, riding riding the hot hand from there. Uh, hopefully D'Lo can have a, a bounce-back game. He's been in, on the bench kind of doing some good things, inconsistent as he was in the starting lineup, but it does not affect us as negatively since any scoring from the bench is good scoring given how bad our bench scoring has been. So that move, uh, sending him to the bench, really helped our team uh, shake into what, made more sense for more roles so uh that's really what it comes down to hopefully he can have a confident night this evening he's gonna have some tough matchups and uh we just got to be ready for those young kids man Keontae George Filipowski Collier Williams uh, everybody man Sensaba I don't know that they'll play Bryce Sensaba but he's a a big body scorer off of their bench who was drafted it in the uh, first round last year so uh, I'm aware he's a very, very capable scorer, man. Very capable. And so that's why I tell people, be careful with this Jazz team. They don't really use the best of what they have a lot of the time, but there's some, there's some, there's some sweet young gems out there that they're going to be able to develop, and at some point in time, you're going to probably see them break out at some point. So that's really what it is with the Utah Jazz. They're going to be extremely talented when they're done tanking. So... Let's let's take advantage of them being a tank squad right now and that a lot of these guys are young. And so, yeah, man, big game tonight. Any game that has the cup label on it is an important basketball game. You're going to want to score as much as you can. You're going to want to blow the other team out with a massive differential. Um, it's not just about winning. It's about how you win with this cup. So let's con- continue to do that and, and, and let's protect this house, man. Let's go 7-0 at home, 6-0. In a row is what we're aiming for in terms of wins. And, um, you know, let's enjoy the alternate floors that we're going to be seeing on this homestand. Tonight is the tournament floor. The next one will be our city floor, which is a black themed floor for the Lakers that will be reoccurring throughout the course of this season. I'm excited about it personally. I love our regular floor, but it is good to see a variety and a difference. And I've been calling for that for a couple years and they finally have given us an alternate floor with their alternate jerseys to match. So although we won't see that tonight, we will see it on Thursday against the Orlando Magic. So yeah, homestand that won't look normal to Laker fans. You're not going to, you ain't going to recognize our floor, (laughs) but it will be, uh, it will be nice to see both of those floors. I think they both look good. So that's really what it comes down to, man. Experimenting with different types of branding uh, this week. So that's pretty much what I got to say, man. Um, Of course, when it comes to the injury report, you just know that things could change last minute. It's only about seven o'clock right now. So whatever the heck is going on with the injury report could very well change by the time 730 tonight comes around. But we will be ready for whatever it is that we have uh, coming against us. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to continue to defend this Emirates Cup at the end. We won it last year. And we're undefeated in this tournament. So let's not pick up our first loss against the Jazz at home. Uh, And I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup in regards to it being a trap game. Because one could come in here expecting the Jazz to give you a win. And as I said, if you watch highlights from the couple of games that they've been playing, that's not how other teams have been going against them. Sacramento had to fight. Dallas lost the game. Phoenix had to fight. San Antonio's had to fight. They make you fight, man. So that's really what it comes down to. If you don't show up, they will take this one. BDL 44, I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.